Hello, everyone. Welcome to this space. I am your host slash moderator slash organizer for Screw Week, a week dedicated to the life and legacy of DJ Screw. But not only dedicated to the life and legacy of DJ Screw, also dedicated to all of you. Um, the Screw community, the supporters, everyone who loves Screw, who love to listen to Screw, and those who've kept the shop uh, screwed up records and tapes open for the past 20 years since he passed away. And um, so this space tonight is dedicated to a virtual night, a little bit of education, a little bit of music, um, but we're going to have a, a great time. First of all, let me introduce my co-host slash host host with the most most, Admin Sherm. How y'all doing, man? It's Admin Sherm. I gave it a name. That's my uh, IG, so just follow me. I don't have a lot of followers, so I need as many as I can get, you know what I'm saying? So boost my numbers. Uh, but, you know, uh, I'm the CEO of Crowded Streaming, uh, Houston's own streaming platform, the Purple app. Uh, of course, you can download that in the app stores. And we represent independent artists. We fight hard for independent artists. We're assistants uh, for independent artists. So, you know, I'm here to uh, assist uh, Rocky tonight and uh, give you guys some information about uh, how to protect your uh, music and how to, uh, you know, just secure the bag, you know, once you put your music out there. And of course, you know, we're available 24 hours a day. If you have any other questions outside of this panel, man, just follow me on Instagram or follow Product Streaming and we'll answer your question, you know, no, no matter what time of night. So uh, thank y'all for jumping in and I appreciate you Rocky for having me. Of course, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for being here. Sure. Okay, so like I said, now I've changed my name too. Thank you for that, Sherm. <laughs> Official Rocky Rocket in the corner, right down here. So um, before, you know, I, I said a little bit about what Screw Week is. Um, Screw Week is also part of a nonprofit organization called Screwed Up HQ. Um, in association with uh, the Contemporary Arts Museum. So um, we're here to protect everything that is screw the life and legacy, and also um, educate the community that loves screw going forward about health, wellness, um, and just being a great artist just in general and supporting um, independent music artists, of course. So with that said, to recap, so today is day three of uh, what, nine, ten days of activations. Yes. So uh, on day one, we had a uh, Screws House event, which was a blend of um, art and also DJ Screws uh, items that were part of the University of Houston collection um, at the African American Public Library at the Gregory School. So it was awesome. It was amazing art. Amazing artists came out to show their work. And it was just um, wonderful seeing so many different interpretations of uh, what Screw has done and all these legendary pictures that you see and have seen, but um, just seeing everyone spin on it. Um, and then, of course, we had a, a panel that was moderated by uh, HTX, Shelby over at the HTX Hip Hop Museum. Um, and that was awesome as well. On the panel, uh, we had uh, Artistic Misfits. Um, uh, we had, uh, Kama, uh, and Ruru, please correct me if I'm messing up any of these names. Please don't let me be out here like that. 
uh, we we had a uh, willing uh, of the SUC. Uh, we had uh, Camillo Hannibal, um, a journalist, a local journalist in the hip for the hip hop industry. And of course, we had Rue Rob, who is the uh, the director of Screwed Up HQ nonprofit organization. And I am a community organizer. So <clears throat> <clears throat> with that said. Hey, Rocky, did you need me to jump in? Sorry, I just realized yeah, you said my... Go ahead. Um, you were naming the panelists. Did you say yes, Kama Marie, yes, yes. Um, Hannibal, uh, or um, Camilo Smith, also known as Camilo, Camilo Hannibal, myself, Willine, um, Sider, Sider, Texas, and then there was, was a Miguel. moderate, uh, Miguel, Miguel Caesar, yes, the, the um, he's the manager of the African American Library at the Gregory School, and then lastly, it was moderated by Shelby Stewart um, from the HTX Hip Hop Museum. Yes, yes. And it was amaz an amazing panel. Uh, we had uh, a lot of questions um, that were answered. Uh, and I just, I loved it. And uh, of course, pieces from the, the University of Houston hip hop, I mean, I'm sorry, the University of Houston DJ Screw Collection that were uh, provided specifically for this event and will be on display for a little while. I gotta, can't forget to ask how long is that gonna be on display so I can refer people over there, but- I think it's still September. Through September, okay, yes. yeah. Thank you. I need to make sure that I let people know. All right, so, that was amazing. Sherm, what did you think about that Saturday event? Man, it was, you know, it was like uh, walking back in time, you know what I mean? And and just, you know, reliving that, that screw era and just uh, watching everybody. It just I just love the fact that people still have screw in their hearts and they still have screw in their hands and, you know, and in their art. And, uh, you know, I saw some amazing pieces, man. We had Don Froze, you know, painting uh, live, you know, creating a, a DJ's crew uh, 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 art piece. Uh, we had a, a, I forgot the lady name, but she had a beautiful art piece made out of glass, man. You know, it, it was for sale, you know, it was a little bit above my price range, but man, I wish I could have got it, you know, and, uh, you know, she had that. I uh, saw a, a, a whole collection of DJ Screw tapes and DJ Screw DVDs and, you know, just things that I didn't even know existed. You know, I got to see them and, and touch them. And, you know, it, it just brought me back to that time, man, to 9596, you know. Oh, you're yeah. telling your age, oh, Hey, hey, I was five. I was five then, I think. <laughs> nah. Yes, yes. Well, if you missed it, of course, this year, don't miss it again. Next year, we had an amazing time, uh, which brings us to day two of Screw Week. I'm still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that was our first annual Screwed Up Records and Tapes DJ Screw Slab Parade and community organization uh, and community uh community activism yeah, community yeah. yeah. Uh, i believe that that's what we called it i'm sorry y'all my brain is the whole community was there <laughs> yes literally showed out for that event um, if you haven't received an email about it, please drop your email in the chat box uh, because I want to make sure that I get you on the uh, email list for the daily updates and recaps. Um, this event and specifically 
was hot. <laughs> and I don't mean just hot because it's Houston. It was hot because we had some fire slabs, um, some great artists in attendance, some wonderful people who showed up. Um, and it was it was a, a great, a great time. We had a lot of music. We had a slab line come through and we made the Houston Chronicle. That wasn't planned. <laughs> that wasn't planned. We were just creating dope stuff and literally the Chronicle reached out and wanted to uh, ask us about this event. So um, man, big shout out to our volunteers for that day. They gave out water. Um, we all kind of kicked it in my car and some AC in between giving out water and snacks. Um, shout out to Cookie and Jazz and Dill and Lo, uh, and of course, Rue Rob um, and uh, DJ Too Deep, of course, too, who came through and just kind of hopped in with whatever was needed. So um, yeah, that was an amazing event as well. Sherm, you went to that one too. Yeah. And I mean, it, it was dope, like I said. But before I get into, uh, you know, my experience there, man, I just want to, you know, put on record, man. I want to thank uh, uh, Rue Rob and thank Rocky Rock. And we should all thank you guys for making it your business to keep the legacy of Screw alive to make sure that, you know, people respect it, you know what I mean? And, and people appreciate it for what it is. Cause you know, DJ Screw did something amazing and we need to keep that going, you know, for, for infinite years, you know, uh, our great, great, great grandkids need to know about DJ Screw, especially this community. I know he's worldwide, but especially at home, you know what I mean? We need to keep that going and keep that alive. So I just want to thank y'all for, for putting in the time and, 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 you know, putting in your sweat equity and, and just doing everything, organizing everything. I just want to thank y'all for doing that on behalf of the community, you know? Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you but, so much. And, yeah. you know, what I'm going to say uh, to anybody watching this and definitely the people uh, on this right now is that, um, perseverance pays off. <laughs> Everything had to line up, you know, uh, me and Ru Rob have been like mentally building this for a while um, and having these ideas about celebrating Screw in a large way. Um, but the timing was off. Of course, we just came out of the pandemic. So we just received our, <laughs> yeah, you could be outside again license. So <laughs> Um, every, but you know, that pandemic gave us a chance to buckle down into these virtual spaces, um, and utilize technology like Zoom, um, and of course, social media to interact with the screw community and kind of build that rapport with the community and screwed up records and tapes while everyone was kind of locked down. So, um, it, it's been an ongoing thing and it may look like this was the first year of it, but really we've been building this for years <laughs> and um, building those relationships to kind of show that we really do care about this community. This isn't about, you know, um, about uh, anything other than just taking care of our Southern hip hop history and lifting it up. So thank you for that. Yeah. So with that said, um, I have a special treat for you guys tonight. Uh, we have a health and hip hop panel that I moder moderated. And we're basically going to talk about health in the hip hop industry. Now, you may know some of these people. Uh, we have on our panel, uh, Derek Direct Dixon, uh, the CEO of Rec Shop Records. So if you don't know about Rec Shop Records, uh, Rec Shop Records is currently, I'm not going to say was, but uh, a pillar in our Southern hip hop community. 
Um, originally, they signed artists such as Big Mo, Fat Pat, Big Hawk, um, and were very influential in um, helping those people kind of get over just only being independent, but also getting them national coverage as well and on, on the charts. So um, amazing work that he has done and continues to do, not only in the music industry, but in the community in general. And he uh, joined us for this talk. Um, also, Dougie D joined us as well from Gorilla Mob. Um, to talk to us kind of a little bit about his history of, you know, being in the hip hop industry. What phone? Oh. <laughs> being in the hip hop industry um, and, uh, you know, his transition to turning into, you know, health being a part of his daily reg regimen. And then of course, we also have DJ 2D who joined us as well. Uh, DJ 2D is a, another pillar in our community. He a long time DJ at uh, the club called Mr. A's, which is has one of the longest running nights uh, over there called Hood Night and um, people from all over the world have popped up over there. Um, and he always shows love to everyone. He's also a poet um, and an actor, an artist, and an activist. So I'm very, very happy to uh, be able to share this with you guys because this, this conversation is very near and dear to my heart. But not only my heart, I, I know also anyone who's lost someone uh, due to health issues, of course, in our generation. So without further ado, let me, I got you, Sharon. So, you can do the pleasure. All right, let's see what we got here. Can y'all see it? Everything good? Not yet. It's a black screen though? Oh yeah. All right. All right. Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome, welcome to the health, hip hop, and wellness check-in panel. We have three amazing people here with us today. But before we talk about that, I want to thank y'all for tuning in today. I'm your host and moderator for this panel, official Rocky Rocket, two T's, don't forget it. <laughs> uh, and I'm just here to let y'all know that um, we love DJ Screw. We're celebrating him this week. And unfortunately, um, with DJ Screw, uh, he passed away at a very young age, at the age of 29 years old. So it's very important that you guys are here today so that we could talk about your health and wellness as far as you were concerned as, as a screw fan. So let me, without further ado, let me get my panel to introduce themselves. We got... Derek Derek Gleason, the uh, Rick Shop Records. <laughs> Y'all know me, Dougie D, the Real Mall represents Slow Line Bang Screw, the PUD Empire Healthy Guy. DJ Tookie, the Celebrate Evil Educate People, Big Knobside, and Smut. Yeah. Hey, all right. So I'm very excited about this topic today. Let's go ahead and hop right in. So I'm going to ask the same question to everybody on this panel. But first, let's talk to you, Derek uh, Dixon, Mr. D-Rec, Mr. D-Rec Shop, 
And my question to you is, what in your career, uh, tell me about your unhealthy <laughs> times, as much as you possibly can get into without incriminating yourself, of course. But tell me about some of your unhealthy times in the industry. I can be honest, uh, you know what I'm saying? I played sports and college and stuff, so I always, my default, wasn't no stranger to working out or to the gym or nothing like that. But I can honestly say, during our most pivotal wreck shop moment, the movement, I, yeah, I was playing on this for the previous time, and I was. Um, 4,500, can you mute yourself real quick? You know, daily, I had put on about. 20 extra pounds and um it just wasn't working out you know some of it was because we were busy moving around and some of it was just because i went in my right mind <laughs> you know but that was probably the most healthiest point man and the blessing was when i when i finally got to the point where i was like i'm not gonna sit drink no more and um and within two weeks i lost almost like 15 pounds you know what i'm saying especially me everybody know about the old drink but it had a lot of hair so it had a, a real physical dependency on you. So you would really, really get the cramping and sweating and all that. And I mean, for real, I ain't sure about what they're drinking right now, but back then, you could almost literally, you could almost see the hair in the drink floating around. So, so we had to go through that to get off of that. But that's when I knew how just losing that much weight and that short period of time that we know right then, I was like, damn, I'm telling you what you can put your mind <clears throat> over the last, you know, and I haven't gone on for like two, three years, you know? So. That was my worst time after that, you know what I mean? I, I got back in motion, you know what I mean? And uh, I, I put my health back a part of my life. Mm. Oh, man. What about you, uh, Dougie D? Well, I know. You know, pretty much, like I say, like, pretty much like Rick, man, most of my life, I've always been uh, healthy because, like I said, my dad, he was a boxer, so I grew up in the boxing gym playing football, basketball, doing martial arts. So I've always been active with athletics and whatnot. But as I got older, now my, I'm gonna say around teenage years, I started experiencing, you know, with alcohol and whatnot. And got to got around 19, that's when I was introduced to the drink. You know, boys were drink heavy, we were pouring forwards and two years and stuff like that and you know we had uh, pills i was popping these pills uh in the ball i was popping uh, uh water burger jack in the box timmy chan which is a lot of fast food restaurants a lot of stuff that we we're not really just talk uh especially in, in, in our culture about all the stuff that they can cause you cancer, high blood pressure, diabetes. And then some of us have people in our family who do who, who know this information and try to pass it on, but we so used to our habits. Like, you know, our parents pass these traditions on to us, their parents pass them on, and which it can, it can get deeper than that, go back to slavery. The reason why, you know, we eat ham hocks and chips and stuff like that, because you know, that's the you know, the master's unwanted parts. So we had to survive. But nevertheless, <clears throat> uh, you know, all that stuff, man, that's 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 that's, that's why that's why I was there. It was that's when we were going. We was young, experimenting, growing, and just at the same time too, you know, we got the streets grinding, getting it in. That's where we come from. That's how some of us had to pay rent and stuff. So that's where it was. And Tootie, what about you? Unhealthy days. Um, honestly, even my most unhealthy days were still kind of, <laughs> kind of healthy. Like I might have stayed on this side or the wrong side of the fence a little too long, but I always kept a toe on the right side at some point. So just kind of giving the background of my life. I grew up black community, black family, like everybody else. So similar eating habits like everybody else, but at a young age, I realized there was something wrong with it and tried to start doing something about it. So like one of the fun facts about me is at age 14, I tried to be a vegan, not even knowing like the ins and outs of what it takes to be a vegan. I thought it was all about eating salad. So I almost made myself sick eating salad every day, but it was for the purpose of trying to be on the right path. So even now, 
I haven't had pork since I was 14. I don't even remember what bacon tastes like. But I've also, I haven't had a headache, a cold, a flu, none of that. Um, as far as like street life, I definitely was a, a part of that and I dabbled in all this stuff too. I was drinking just like everybody else. Um, it never got to the point where it consumed me, where I had like I was dependent on it, but it was definitely a part of my life. And then transitioning out of that into the clubs, it's kind of more the same thing because one of the things that's from the entertainment perspective is a lot of times the healthy options of food are not always as accessible, especially, you know, you're on the road doing these shows. Ain't no salon open at four o'clock in the morning, but, you know, Waffle House is. So that's kind of how a lot of us end up in these traps. And as far as like, you know, pills and stuff like that, I never really doubt in pills is because I was always a firm believer that if you're drinking and you feel yourself going left, you can stop. If you're smoking and you feel yourself going well, you can stop. If you take a pill and you feel yourself going well, you can't untake it. <laughs> so you got to ride that ride. So for, for that reason, I never really messed with I always stayed away from pills. Uh, I experimented with sir because uh, I was selling it and I wanted to know what I was selling. Um, but I, I didn't let myself get engulfed in it because at that time, even though everybody was doing it before it was called the opioid epidemic and all that, when it was popping, I knew it was an expensive high, and I knew it wasn't nothing I wanted to try to maintain because everybody I knew was spending $7, $70 or better on a, 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 an ounce. So it was like, yeah, I, I don't want to do nothing that's going to be eating up all the money I'm making on the street. So I did, y'all. That was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about, hey, we're talking about like some late 90s. Good price. Early 2000s when drink was drink. I don't like like a, a D Rex said, I don't know what they're drinking now, but <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I've probably I've always tried to kind of stay on the healthy side, even though, but now I'm more fervent about being on the healthy side. So I have a goal of living to be hundred. That's right. Like what my main goal. Me too, bro. Yeah, Me too. Yeah, I'm yeah. on I'm on <laughs> <I'm laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Show it up. Yeah. yeah. So, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see, that's another thing about us too that that that, that I'm, I'm amazed with, man. As black people, like even even people, black people who are not really just taking care of their health, they still look. Some of them look still with it, but when you when you crank it up a notch and start changing your your, your eating habits and start putting some exercise into your regimen, man. You say you're 50, 50 well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. say, you say you're 60, 60 well. Like, you know, people don't really know how old you are until you say something. Yeah. yeah. That's how, that's how I do. Well, actually, my next question for all of y'all is when was your breaking point? You know, um, sometimes some people don't have a breaking point where it's just down, 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 down and their rock bottom is the grave. Sometimes it's the hospital if they're lucky. But what was y'all's breaking point of like, all right, I need to do something and be serious about. Um, um, can you watch the door and let people in the room? Mindful of it now. You know, so, man, life is a bunch of breaking points. You know what I'm saying? So, being healthy is one thing, kicking drugs. Or kicking specific drugs at specific times, that's a whole nother thing, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't never, you know, embarrassed by it. Ain't too much shit I ain't done. I'm just being real. And, and, you know, each one of those demons got to get killed at some point in time, you know? And um, I've, I've been, i had addiction issues myself many times, you know what I'm saying? I thank God we killed one demon at a time. So, and then, you know, they got smoke demons. I still got to kill another area. So I don't like to look at it like it was so now I just got all my shit together because that's not the case, you know what I'm saying? But I wake up and kill another one tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 the hardcore drug part.
he did the city of Surf, that's what we was doing. It wasn't, it wasn't no limit. <laughs> yeah, you know, based on a true story. <laughs> yeah. And no lie, I used to $200. Mm. So, I can't hear uh Sherm. But um uh I like I said, I got to the point where I ain't like what I saw in the mirror no more. Mm. And um if you ever suffer from addiction, you know that you go through a phase where it ain't fun no more. You mm. go through a phase where you really feel bad internally, whether you're telling anybody else, you feel like a loser on the inside. And to be honest with you, some nights you go to sleep crying. Because you mm. told yourself, I ain't going to do that tomorrow. And then you end wow. up doing it. And then for the night over, when you finally finna lay down, and you look in the mirror, and then you all fucked up. I mean, excuse me. You all. I'm not. You good. You had said you wasn't going to be. So you feel, you know you weak for something. And, uh, you know, I won't lie, man. A couple of nice, teary-eyed nights is when I, I, I made, you know, I was like, man, now nah, I'm going to beat this. And. They got people standing next to me. Not that I think I'm better than anybody else, but, but other, I saw I measure myself. So, man, if this man ain't doing that, I cannot do it. You know, yeah. I know I have friends that kick stuff. So anyway, so I went through that process of slowly but surely weeding out, um, I call them demons, you know, some of my bad addictions. Health-wise, food-wise, I'm still working on that, you know what I'm saying? But I always like the gym. I always like to work out. The older I get, to be honest, it just helps me. I'm not doing this for the look. I go work out because it made me a better business, man. It made me function. I get clarity. Sometimes I wake up with my whole head club. And when I leave the gym, I, I got it figured out. So now it becomes a habit. You know what I'm saying? I'm 53. And uh, like when we see, I'm trying to see at least 47 more. And, uh, you know, so I got to keep killing some demons. Eventually, I got to cut some pork out and some other stuff. Man. But yeah, there was no. I quit on nothing. I mean, it's just it's a process. And I think people got to embrace the process. And I think you got to start with what's worse. You know what I'm saying? What's the thing that can most likely kill you? What's slowing you down? And lastly, right, I will say this. I made a choice of my mind. Do I want what I want more than I want that? Mm. And once I told myself that, like, man, you say you want to drive this. If you want to live like this, you, this is what's stopping you. Because you're waking up too late. you up at the wrong time. You're investing your energy and your money into the wrong things. And once I put those two together and then, you know, start having some success, say, man, I was right. I was right. Because now this is starting to go right. And it make you do less of it. So that's yeah. just what's about. Mm. I love that. True times right there. Yeah. Specifically, what you said about your own mental health and you taking time to reflect on and putting that, that two and two together and saying, Hey, I'm losing money, I'm losing time, I'm losing energy, I'm losing all of the things that's going to help me get to where I want to get to. Um, yeah, that so, WD, same question, bro. Uh, on your end. What was your moment of clarity that you had when you were like, all right, I'm really going to take this health thing seriously? I think more or less when my mom died in my home, the hospital. Wow. More or less than that. That, 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 was, that, was, that, that was that was one of the things that like, was embedded in my mind I, like right now to this day, like 2013, man. And like my mom, she had cancer. She had COPD, diabetes, high blood pressure, some type of rare condition where her body would produce too much blood and they would have to drain it from her. And a lot of stuff was going on with her. She smoked cigarettes too and drank Miller High Life. And uh, I, I know that smoking cigarettes, man, tobacco, period, man, that's like, people don't really understand like how detrimental the cigarettes is to your health, how tobacco products is to your health, period. Dipping tobacco, all that, man. And my daddy, he, he dipped that tobacco. My mom was a smoker. So, man, like, <clears throat> when, when, 
when my mom died, my arms, man, I was see those commercials. Do you have COPD? Feel like an elephant on your chest, this, that, and the other. And mind you, my mom had just died in my arms. I was still smoking cigarettes, though, stressed out, just thinking about her and shit. Then I'm hit my mom, boss coming to me, say, son, I know mom used to tell you I'm gonna die from something one day, but don't let that be you. Mm-hmm. Don't, 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 I don't want you in the hospital bed like I was. I don't want your kids to see you like I was. Mm-hmm. I would hear her boss tell me that every time I'd be smoking a cigarette. And then like my son, he used to like, I go, I start buying packs, I go buy singles. You know, my son, he a little football star. And like, I, I love my son for this man. And you know, he used to take my cigarettes, I go buy singles. We'd be riding in the car, he'll take them and break them. Mm-hmm. And straighten them back out, sit back in the ass train. Mm-hmm. So when I go to grab it and fall all up on me, I'd be like, <laughs> So my next question to y'all is um about creativity. I've heard a lot of hip hop artists um say that they can't create without their extra, without their uh, pills or drink or, you know, whatever it is that they use to create on that's also causing the health problems. They feel uh, that it'll be difficult for them to get into that mode without it. And that is in turn what I see over and over again in hip hop industry, accidental overdoses, um, all of that kind of come, but you know, even going to jail, <laughs> you know, getting pulled over with the wrong thing on the way there. So um, how do y'all get into that creative mode with health and wellness and fitness Can I and everything like that? Can I go first on this? And the reason why I want to go first is because this is a conversation I have with a lot of young artists. One of the main things I always try to get across to them is do not create a situation where you have to have something outside of you to produce what you have inside of you. Because what usually ends up happening is that outside source starts taking over. And when you wrote your first song, you didn't have to be high. I don't know no artist I ever met who had to be high when they wrote their first song. So it's in you. You have it in you. We all born here with gifts, skills, and talents. We all have them. If you feel like you're handicapped by these drugs, that you can't access this, it's just a proof that you've been marrying them together too long. Mm-hmm. And it's time for a divorce. Mm-hmm. Because what's going to end up happening is that thing you think you need it's going to take you to your grave. And it's going to take you away from actually being able to create. Mm. Ain't no studios to rehab to the best of my knowledge. And I know they ain't in no uh, uh, funeral home. Uh, I can just say, man, my 30 years doing this music stuff, um, I just realized so many artists, and I'm kind of not sidestepping because I'm yeah, 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 yeah. like how you should deal with it. Yeah. Deal with it. I just take it from my personal experience doing the mode, school, you know, we all use my partners, you know what I mean? And we all was doing the same at the same time. And, uh, you know, artistry, a lot of very creative people, for some reason, happen to be manic depressed. Yeah. It's the truth. I'm not, not a, I'm not scapegoat, nothing. I mean, I've worked with a, a lot of creative people like I say, in the last 30 years, and mm-hmm. many of them are manic, depressing, or, you know, suffer from some type of mental health. I don't say I'm So that alone is a recipe for disaster because we always trying to escape. People escape through the music. People escape through the, the, the um, power that comes from being successful, all that. But when you marry all that together, and you got app, you got enough money to supply your high. You got everybody coming and bringing you drugs. You know, it's a bad recipe, and then and you graduate. So yeah, I, I won't lie. We make the food taste better, make the music sound better, we make certain things. But 
it can't be the driving factor because, like two D said, you're gonna graduate. You're gonna go from the weed to the pills to this to that to something that's gonna end up killing you, or you know, you know, let it get the best of you where it's unhealthy, man. I um, so I like to say is that you know, be careful. Uh, we lose too many, too many people, you know, in our industry today. And that's why I want to come on here. We lose too many. And it's always the same story, you know what I mean? It's always drugs or it's guns, you know what I'm saying? That's our, all our artists, you, either one of us kill them or they kill themselves on drugs. And at some point in time, we have to bring this conversation to the forefront mm -hmm. and, and start talking about being healthy, not just physically, but mentally mm -hmm. and financially, mm -hmm. so that we don't get caught up in this. Mm -hmm. And that's why this is important. I, I was screwed. I mean, what better time yeah. to address this? Because it's not to throw stones at nobody. Right. It's, to, it's to say this culture, this business promotes that. As soon as you walk in the studio, half the artists out here want to get in this business. The ones that really ain't got no talent want to get in this because they see this as a job where they can smoke weed, get high, and get fucked up all day in the studio. And um, that's an unhealthy lifestyle. Oh, man, it's a hard way to come back once you get the deeper you go down that hole, the harder it is to crawl out of it, the more addictions, more demons you're gonna have to kill. So, like we we'll said earlier, you know, if you gotta be high to make good music, man, then you really ain't making good music. Mm -hmm. The worst kind of addict is the famous addict. Wow. The famous addict is the worst kind of addict. I guess because when you got a nine to five, you start losing time at work, you might lose your job, you might lose your family. When you claim this and you an addict, people give you drugs just to hang around you yep. or to see you act a certain type of way. I want I want this person to do this, like uh bring up a person, for example, old dirty bastard from, from Wu Tang Clan. People would give him drugs just to see him act a certain kind of way because they wanted him to be that character that they saw in videos. <clears throat> Not thinking about this his help. You got people around you that's always handing you drugs, and ain't never handing you a cup of water, ain't never handing you a dumbbell, ain't never handing you a salad. You might look at them people a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. Dougie D, what about you when it comes to um, creating wild? Well, I could say from, 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 from being the one that consumed the drugs and wrote the songs and being sober and writing songs. I can say from my personal experience as a youngster, when I was doing the drugs, I felt like it made me be more creative, but going along with what he said, I had tapped into meditating and read like I read it and, and just sharpening my mind and, and, and whatnot. So that way, when I do sit down and pimp the pen, I, I'm, I'm really doing what I already had inside of me. I just thought, I just, the drugs was, I thought was, was enhancing it. But no, it seemed like that at the time and I had, and it was snapping and jamming too. I, I, could, do the same thing. I could do the same thing as going, and like I told you once before, I don't smoke my weed. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I don't care. What, right. what you think, how you say it? <laughs> it's just a gang on me, straight up. I, I was fired, we gonna run some miles. I, I'm telling you, this is what I do. So I'm gonna still fire, because it's therapeutic for, for me. To me, it's a lot of people that don't consider marijuana a drug. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's very true. It's synthetic. It grows from the ground. Come on. Like us. Talk to it. So mm -hmm. I, I, I just know the truth. You know, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you got to be careful where we roll it in and all right. that. Kid, no, 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 that, no, that's, no, that's, that's a fact. Yeah. But like Rose saying, so you know, I'm gonna roll up and I'm gonna sit up in my I'm gonna get in my num yard around me kill and get in my zone. And I'm gonna let the beat talk to me and I'm gonna talk on the talk on the page. So, but I can say I don't need all the other stuff. I don't need the eggs, pills, the mileage, the purpose it. I never took a purpose. I don't even know what it looked like. I, I that, that's the new way. But I do know about XP, I do know about Molly, uh, the handlebar and the drink. They got the green drink. They got the, they got, now they got Wok, they got Timbo, they got the uh, Ben, they got so many of them. They ain't gonna leave that. They ain't gonna leave that. I wanna share this, man, one time uh, before I got knocked out of my hustle, man, we was doing, 
Because when power was out. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> the infamous power. <laughs> I, 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 I just signed my deal and I got in trouble. Uh, I violated my probation. <clears throat> so I went from my high moment to my low when I was in the county. And uh, you know, in the county, they ain't got no mirrors. You know? They got them 10 you know, looking little metal things. You flip the metal. But you can't really like my house with And uh, you know, so they know they can't use it. Everybody tank. And then Power came on. And you know, they had that thing. I'm going to be five. I don't know what the hell they thought I was going to do my verse. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a long, sick moment. And uh, I knew I was blue. I knew I, I'm blowing a yeah. great opportunity, yeah. man. And uh, anyway, I, I, I went in the, in the restroom and I realized I said, man, you can't see yourself no more mm -hmm. because I had let that lifestyle take me you know, away from when I put this record out. I, I was coming out of grad school with a clear mind and then just step by step, step by step, I didn't let myself get to where I'm addicted to three, four different drugs, yeah. doing them all on a daily basis. Yeah. And then it led me in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I couldn't see myself no more. So anyway, when I got out, um, on um, leg and stuff, I started like thinking about what effect I was having on my community. Right. And I was like, damn, serious sir, um, you know, like we poisoned. I'm, 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 I was doing it unconsciously, but getting in a low spot made it conscious right. of what I was doing. And um, and then from like getting a clear head spot, not yeah, being on the way, and, and, and being on your head, like you say, like yeah. you know, like feeling um self guilt, man. Yeah, you, 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 that that rock bottom you talking about, yeah, man, that was it. You know what I'm saying? And because I got out of there and I, I seen I was at a club and the girl walked up to me, I never forget. She said. I have something where every time I hit power, I just got to pop me a pill. And I was like, oh. mm -hmm. so, you know, um, you got to be conscious about what you're doing to yourself. And we also got to be conscious in this music, what we're doing to other people yeah. and how we're affecting our community. And I promise, you know, God and everything I said, if ever, you know, he put me back in a position, you know, to really influence and impact. That I wouldn't deviate away from right, right. because that's not why I got in this business. Right. I got in this business because I felt like entertainment has such an influence and a powerful effect on our community. So I was like, I can I can give more game through this. Yeah. But I lost myself in it. So you know, like I said, this is a great opportunity to, to, to speak on this. And I really, really, really think that. They got, we got, like, this got to be more the forefront. You yeah. can see all the artists and how people dying and get killed yes. from unhealthy living. And, you know, I don't know what else to say. So, yeah. I, I, I share that. Thank you. And, cool. you know, that's the reason why we definitely wanted to do this on the week of uh, DJ Screw's birth because uh, DJ Screw would have been 51, I believe, this year. And, if he would have had a chance to uh, live past the mistakes that he made, who knows what 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 changes he would have been trying to make. I mean, if if that would have just been his wake up call, like he would have had a chance to make those corrections. And it's not too late for anybody who's watching this. Um, I'm gonna make sure that we uh, leave some. In, in the description of this YouTube video, some references, some places where y'all can go and actually look up some other YouTube videos and everything about uh, getting it together, basically. Um, and it's not too late if you're watching this, it's not too late for you. So before we go, I have one more question and then we'll get out of here. Uh, my question for all three of y'all is, um, some advice that you have for music artists right now who are upcoming and of course you know I know you know myself from working with independent artists sometimes when you're focused on making it and and struggling day to day and financial struggles and like you're so worried about getting the next hit 
that your own personal health takes a back seat and you're just living day by day. Um, what advice from the, each of y'all, uh, either would you give that independent artist or would you give your younger self? I would say, first and foremost, there is no greater will, no greater will than your health. Because no matter how much money you get, you can't spend it if you die. So love yourself more. That's what I would say. When you love yourself more, you are gonna naturally start doing the things that, that, that you need to do to take care of your temple. You only got one of these, man. You only got one. And you only got one of mine. Guarded, protected, empowered. Uh, same, same with your body, man. I, I know you're young and you're growing and you're experimenting and you ain't got it all together. But listen to some people who've been around a little bit and we did enough for the bad to help you do, do the right, do the good. Mm. You got it. Man, don't blow it. <laughs> 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 you know, opportunities don't come at all, man. And the best thing you can do is be in the, in the best state of mind you can be. Um, I try to tell people, man, start <clears throat> at an early age, start learning the art of sacrifice. Um, one by one, like giving things up. Like you can literally be on your knees and ask God and say, hey, I'm gonna stop doing this, or I'm not gonna do this. And why it actually works. You make like those are things that can help you along the way. But my most important advice, man, is that um, you know, because we all gonna make mistakes and we all gonna grow up that opportunities don't come that often. And the last thing you want to do is be looking back and saying, damn, I blew it because I wasn't at my best, I wasn't sharp, I wasn't. I was unhealthy. I wasn't thinking clear. I was cloudy. I was high. I missed the show. I didn't show up. I, I missed my plane. You're going to miss your opportunity. And um, and you'll be here. I got some regrets, man. I got a lot of stories. I really feel like right now I should be at least a couple hundred million dollars in, in this thing. But, and I'm not. And I'm not because of bad decisions. Like, I'm not because I was um, indulging in too many drugs, man. Just being honest, while we were doing great, great work, working our ass off, I could have been twice the cat I was, you know what I'm saying? So when people try to pat, pat me on the back and say anything I've done, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I know what I could have done. You know what I mean? And I think that anybody gonna have that, but you can lessen that by not getting, you know, hooked on drugs, and most importantly, being healthy so you can be here to enjoy it. Be not, it's just simple as that. You know, you gotta make the right choice. Live like the edge of what you're saying, brother, like, like that's basically is a sign of maturity when you get to have self conviction and recognize where you fall in that and, and be like, you know, I'm gonna tighten up and, and, and you able to, even, even people that really love you, if, if they look like they say they do, they won't tell you when you when you when you're not doing the right thing, bro. And when you able to 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 accept that and digest that and process that and make a change from that and come back better, that just shows you're broke and that just shows that you really are changing. Mm. You know, sure. Yeah, that's the true facts, man. I'm thank God to have a chance to share. Yeah. Yeah. Might be why you know yeah. Yeah. Stuff, so yeah. 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 somebody else, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro. First, it's going to start with recognize who you are. A lot of people think, you think whatever your name is, that's who you are. That's not who you are. You are a creator, created by a creator for the purpose of creating heaven on earth. You are one in 400 trillion. It is more likely to win the lottery for the big number seven times than it is that you be born. That is not by accident. And you cannot let anything or any person derail you from the reason why you are allowed to be that one of 400 trillion. I would say start developing some strong whys. Why do you want to do this? Is it just about shining on niggas or is it a bigger purpose? Because I guarantee you, if it's a bigger purpose, you will find the strength to let go of the things that are slowing you down. 
and rewire your mind for sacrifice, kind of like what Eric was saying. A lot of people, when they think about sacrifice, they think of what they're losing. But what sacrifice really means is trading something of a lower nature for something of a higher nature. So don't get so focused on what you're giving up. Get focused on what you're going to gain. <laughs> Any friends you lose because you stop drinking or smoking or popping or snorting or whatever the fuck you're doing, you didn't need them niggas no straight up. The other part I would say is get some people around you who reflect your ideals. So say, for example, I got a, a friend who way more physically fit than me. I got friends who are way more spiritually knowledgeable than me. I got friends who are more financially stable than me. And I use them as my frames of reference to a degree as far as am I on track or not. If I'm getting closer to this person who got their money right, I know I'm on point with my money. If I feel like I'm getting further away from them, I know I need to rev it up. And I do that with other stuff too. People around you make a big difference. In the Bible, the, the, a friend is defined by the person that helps you complete your vision. So ask yourself, when you look around people around you, how many people actually help me complete my vision? They all know what I'm trying to do with this rap shit. They already know what I'm trying to do with the music shit. How many of them actually help me get there? Because some people just go ride and ride and keep handing you drugs, ride and ride, and, and then when something happens to you, man, why you ain't telling me shit? You a grown ass man. Any friends you got around you that talk like that, get them the fuck away from around you fast. Oh, they're gonna get away from you as soon as you fall. Yeah, because I'm gonna tell you something about, about, about me. If you my friend, I'm gonna piss you off straight up. If I see you going wrong, I'm gonna piss you out. I really punch me in my mouth, man. You ain't gonna be able to say I ain't tell you was fucking up. Yeah. <laughs> that part you ain't gonna be able to do. Punch me in the mouth. I'll take that. I'd rather leave here with a bloody lip knowing you're gonna be straight. And if you ain't got nobody around you like that. You just is for a whole lot of hardship. Yeah, I don't let you up, but yeah, that's what I would say, man. Like, get focused on your why. Yeah. Get so focused on your why that all this other stuff that you think is important is going to start. Because when your why is strong enough, a lot of things you think important right now going to end up not being important to you. Like, why are you really doing the music? What's your real, real reason? Not the one you tell everybody. What's your real reason? I know I do it. I do it so I don't kill people. <laughs> and I do it because I want to buy some things for my mom. Yeah. And I want to be able to be one of them kind of black people that when I see shit happen in the black community, I ain't got to march or do nothing. I can just push a button and fix that shit. I can't do it if I'm broke like y'all. So I got to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, thank you guys for joining us. Thank all y'all, D-Reg, WD, DJ, 2D. Um, let the people know how they can follow you, uh, how they can tap in with you real quick. And uh, we'll start with D-Reg. Um, um, Instagram, Rick Real, R-E-C-K-R-E-A-L. And on uh, Facebook, D-Reg Dixon. Um, we got me help the game fitness on Instagram. Uh, the real nigga D on Instagram. Uh, yeah, that's me right now. Hey, man, say, man, look, man, you know, I told me to go with this every DJ with the A1 for your eardrum every day, all day, twice on Sunday, most game, and the funny niggas on Rummy, they run from you. 2B dot, E dot, E dot, P. It's 2B to spell in prayer. Soon be your son, baby, ringtone. I already was white, white, might not let a ring on. All right, people with the OG with the pretty, we rock, and we can't kick it. I be goddamn, I am on Instagram, DJ, I, I, D, E, P. Same thing on Facebook. Give me a second look. 832-428-8566. Get your big females, especially. <laughs> hey, and I am at a well, I show it up to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, <don't worry. laughs> and I am at official rap and rocket R O C K Y R O C K E T T with two T's. And thank you guys. Uh we'll all be on here until we are a hundred years old. So sure. it's gonna be more of this coming. Sure. Thank y'all for joining us. R.I.P. DJ Screw. And happy birthday, DJ Screw. We yeah. love you. We're and thank you. Yes. Wherever you at hearing this, thank you, DJ <laughs> Screw. Because I'll probably be in jail right now. <laughs> that, that, all of them. Yes, thank all of y'all.
for bringing us together today. And we're out. Man. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Um, man. So, you know, I got 4,500 on the line with us and Sherm. And uh, I really like to hear some of y'all's thoughts about um, that conversation. I have to say that conversation was uh, very uh, important for me to have because all of these people who were on the panel lost very important people to them, both DJ Too Deep and um, Dougie D lost their mom. And you could hear Dougie D saying that his mom passed away in his arms and she just wouldn't stop smoking and you know wouldn't take care of herself. And uh, DJ Too Deep lost his mom as well. And um, both of them lost very important people who were very close to them, even beside, who weren't even family. And then of course, uh, D-Rec of Rec Shop, we all know that um, Fat Pat, Big Mo, uh, and Hawk have all passed away. So um, yeah, it was, it was um, pretty deep uh, conversation to have, but it was very necessary and I'm very glad that we are having it uh, on the week of DJ Screw's birthday. So yeah, with that said, uh, what did y'all think? What are some of y'all's thoughts? I mean, it's something that needs to be said, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, into this day in this world, it, it's in this culture, it's built in the culture. So it's something that we need to be talked about. You know, it's a younger generation that's coming up behind us that need to know what actually happened. You know, a lot of these newer artists really, you know, they know about screw and stuff like that, but they don't know the what actually happened. You know, like they're saying, it's a lot of depression and stuff like that. So I think that's actually good to educate. That's the thing that we need to do as in the black community, we need to educate our youth. Uh, I look at it like uh, it was uh, the question that you asked, you know, uh, you asked them uh, when was the moment where they, they turned it around, you know, and they all had personal stories. But this panel could be a turnaround moment for multiple people, you know, all at one time. You know what I mean? It, it could be a turnaround moment for a lot of people. So, you know, during all the, you know, the partying and, and really celebrating the life of DJ Screw, this is the perfect time to kind of pump, uh, pump the brakes and catch everyone while their attention is here and say, look, this is also happening, you know, in the community too. So, you know, I think it was very powerful and, um, you know, it, it, it was a great, panel to put together you have people from different walks of life and and uh and different parts of the industry and you know it was a wake-up call for me i was over here taking notes you know my wife <laughs> you know what I'm writing down stuff i need to stop you know so you know hey it's a wake-up call for a lot of people yeah i would i would uh support with that a thousand percent i mean i kind of put it in the chat but i think it's uh, admirable for um you know black men in this context right there were three other black men in rocky to be able to share their struggles in a safe space you know for for the intention to hopefully heal in some way you know the question that i left with is how can we create more safe spaces for uh these kind of conversations and allow people to confront their uncomfortableness having uncomfortable conversations. Um, and I think that can happen in a panel format like you uh, did, Rocky, or, you know, it can happen in another place. You know, I, th I think there can be several ways we think about that, but that's kind of what I was left with is how do we continue to provide places, safe spaces of healing 
for folks that are in different parts of their process when it comes to overcoming addiction or confronting uh, anything that they might struggle with as a re as it relates to hip hop music and you know the refuge that hip hop has played in their life. Yes. And, you know, to kind of answer that, it's definitely, this is usually you, Rob. <laughs> it's exactly what we're doing, you know, um, continuing the legacy and bridging that gap um, and showing people that, yeah, you grew up listening to these people, but these people were struggling while you were listening to them. And, um it was real. It's their real story. It's not just about the what it looks like on the outside and the smoke and mirrors of the industry. And yeah, you have a song on the radio. One thing that uh, D Rex said was about the Power Up song, and it it was going on while he was at a very low point in his life. And you know, uh, he had to go sit down for a second. And when he got out and went to the club and it was hot in the club. The girl came up to him and was like, yeah, I got to pop a pill whenever I hear power up. And that was kind of his moment where he was like, wow, this, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what kind of uh, influence um, have I created? Like, what kind of monster have I created within my community? And um, that's why I'm so big on people who really are very cautious about the the kind of message that they're putting out. Um, now, of course, this wasn't supposed to be a dare program, like absolutely, you know, anything like that. It wasn't meant to come across as being that type of panel, but um, just awareness on the fact that you have one one life. If you be believe that you have one life um and one body and you have to take care of it and um you know all of that and then beyond that even in having these ongoing conversations and doing this organization at many times organizing with Ruab over the past few months organizing this week um you know I I explained to him that coming off of the week I usually go full fledged and just fly through the week. And then when that come down starts, I get kind of like a little depressed and like a little like recluse and I don't really want to, you know, deal with anyone. And I, I have to take my own moment to kind of recharge and uh, fill up my cup again. Um, and just uh, overall, the thought of DJ Screw is just a reminder for me to slow down. And that's what I'm constantly reminding myself in this process because DJ Screw, amongst all of the things that he passed away from, one of them was overworking himself and not taking care of his health. And um, even in organizing around him, I can't, I can't allow for that to happen because that's just reliving history so and the history that we're we're trying to change for future generations of grind culture and just working yourself to death so um with that said speaking of slowing down we uh also have 4500 in here as you just heard his voice uh Sherm, what are we which one are we doing first are we nah you know i i just wanted to uh to have 4,500 on here just to, you know, it's screw week. You know, he, he got his own movement, him and uh, Kingly C, poor, slow movement, the brick layers. You know, I just wanted to see what kind of influence, you know, DJ Screw had on him and, you know, and, and what he planned, where he planned to take his influence and, you know, and, and what kind of things he got coming up, you know. Oh, uh, let me let me start off by saying, man, R.I.P. DJ Screw, man, that's actually one of my biggest inspirations. You know, like a lot of people might say, you know, Michael Jordan and all that screw is like a big 
inspiration for us, the person is not just music, the person, but screw go all the way back to 95 for me. Um, Cause my grandma actually stayed on the street. Like I can go outside and look directly at the shop, you know, Ru-Raw, I'm looking at that picture you got in the back. I mean, it's like bringing me back memories because I can just go out there and I'm sitting on the street. I ain't got to be in there at the screw shop. I got to sit on the curve and I can hear everything. And uh, I remember King C came home with a tape and it was Kiki and he was flowing. I'm like, man, what's what's wrong with your music? Why why it sound like that? You know what I'm saying? It's on the tape. And I'm like, nah, this ain't sounding good. So he's like, man, this little Kiki. So I said, all right. So, you know, that being my older brother, you know, you pick up habits from your older siblings. So I started packing tapes to school. So I had my little cassette play in my backpack. And I was like, man, you jamming that old wax stuff. I'm like, man, hold up, man. This, this screw right here. So that's when I started hearing Kiki, Mo, Pat, you know what I'm saying? And um, fast for a little bit longer. This was probably close to 2000, you know, I'm, I'm still young. So I say, man, I'm gonna save up enough money. I was cutting grass and everything. I say, man, I'm gonna go in the screw shop and I'm buying a tape. I don't care what nobody say, I'm buying a tape. And uh, I remember I was at school and somebody said, man, screw pads. I say, man, nah, you mean, you, you, you lying. He said, man, huh? And he gave me the paper that used to chronicle and showed me and I'm like, that hit me like, man, this somebody I actually wanted to meet and idolize to meet and, you know, talk to like that. But fast forward 20 years later, uh, man, King Lassie, we say, man, you know what? We got so much love for school. Let's do something a little bit different. You know, uh, you know, you got your, your, your screwed up DJs, but, you know, a lot of DJs say screwed and chopped. So we say, you know, but we got too much love for screw. So we say, we're going to bring on the poor slow movement. And just to pick that movement up. And I didn't think people would embrace it like how they did. Like, I didn't want that. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, man, I'm just going to put some little songs together. But the love I had from that movement, it changed everything. You know what I'm saying? So... Like I say, I'm grateful, but, and I'm going to leave you with this. I remember I was driving to work and, um, you know, and I was kind of depressed because I was like, man, nobody don't want to listen to none of my stuff I'm doing. So, you know, you get in that depressed mode, you want to just quit. And I'm like, man, I don't, I don't want to do it. And something I say, you know what, God, just, um, I don't want the skills give me the, the knowledge and to be able to be the person that you was. That's what happened. And it's where we at right now. I mean, hey, I'm gonna say, thank God. I don't know if that was, you know, screw looking down on me. Hey man, I'm, I'm gonna show you a little bit of love. You know what I'm saying? But I can say that's where I'm at. I mean, that's, that's dope, man. You know, it's just, I mean, you, I would say that you got the hands like screw, you know what I'm saying? And, and then it's, it's funny hearing that you said that you want to be like him because you very similar. You know, I watched the DJ screw documentaries and this and that. Everybody say the same thing. Screw will give you the shirt off his back. If he got $10, he'll give you five, you know, he didn't want to sign everybody, uh, all the artists under the same umbrella and keep all the money. He let them go sign their own deals. You know, it's you got you got that, man. So, you know what I'm saying? It's always much respect to you. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you. And, you know, I just want to hear that part, you know, and hear what was behind a poor slow movie. Of course. And, you know, um, in talking about unity, right? Um, I, I know that one topic that I wanted to talk about on virtual night was about unity in the, the independent music community, right? Building fans through collaboration and love <laughs> because that's what it was, right? Um, 
And some people like to say, yeah, Screw did get paid for screw tapes. And, and the industry has evolved. Things are different now uh, because technology has evolved. And yes, uh, some people did pay to get on screw tapes too. But at the end of the day, um, about everything that Screw did to get to that point was by showing love, was by um, helping others, by, you know, seeing amazing artists and just inspiring them and, you know, to push forward and um, showcasing their craft. So he kind of took like a a center role. And I think that that's what, uh, to what Sherm was saying, that's what he was saying. Cause literally when <laughs> me and Sherm were on the phone kind of collaborating and putting virtual night together, he said that he said 4,500 kind of has that spirit. He reminds us a lot of screw or who we would, cause I've never met screw before. I've only, you know, kind of seen little bits and clips um of his videos but that's how I would kind of picture him to be from how people described him as a person that's dope man yeah so with that said in in since we're already on the subject of unity and collaboration in the independent music industry right um 4,500, if I could ask, like, what made you take this stance of, well, to explain to everyone who isn't really aware, <laughs> I don't want it to seem like just, oh yeah, we're just talking on the phone, just me and 4,500, right? Because I've known him for quite some time, but um, what made me reach out to him is the fact that he showed love and like literally he would just ask to hear people's music and he would take their music and put it on a mixtape and slow it down and chop it up. And, um, you know, it, it was it was amazing to see an, uh, a DJ who was um, really on some like, hey, I just want to help. I want to help and do my part as far as supporting in the independent music industry. So with that said, now that I've kind of told y'all a little bit about who 4,500 is and what he does and how he supports the industry in a, in a, a parallel to the way that Screw supported the industry back in the day, um, what made you do this? Um. You know, you, you start something and you you never know the outcome of it. But once I started doing it, I really started loving it. And still to this day, you know, um, I take breaks now. Like you say, um, we go back to the workaholic part. Now, at first, I, I didn't have that in mind. The work, you know, this I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. You know, we used to say all gas, no breaks, you know. Um, but it's just the love of it, you know, seeing somebody blow up like, you know, man, I, I always wanted to hear my song slow down. And just them hearing that joy of that, uh, just to uh, fast forward, I just dropped uh, a tape for Silky Red for the artist of the month. And if y'all could actually hear the excitement in his voice when he heard it, I was like, you know, I'm like, man, I'm about to cry over here. You know, it's just hearing that love and that appreciation you give him, you know, and it's not always about money, but if you could just change somebody just a little bit, that's the way it is. But like you said, Rocky, remember when I first interview, remember when you did with me? You said, after this interview, everything gonna change. And that was what, 2018, 2019? Yeah. And everything changed. Everything changed, yeah. Because, you know, I think even when it came down to what Screw was building, right? It, it it takes a little time because, you know, I said this in a few different settings over the course of Screw Week, right? Um, people are natural born skeptics and we rightfully so. 
there's so many scammers out there technology uh every time you look up one of your friends has gotten their page hacked and it's hopping in your inbox talking about uh send me your cash out <laughs> you know like it, it's it's all of these things that people have used to try to uh make a quick buck off of pages and 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 all of these things you it's hard to tell what's real anymore you know so i just think as far as uh, a community organizer Ru rob i'm putting that hat on um in organizing community you just got to understand that and understand it's going to take a while for things to catch on and for people to grasp what you're doing and that's why i was saying 4500 after you know i wrote that article um that things were going to change for you because now they get to see like this is a legit person as opposed to someone who's just reaching out to me because um and you know like i said exactly what we're doing with screw week it just takes time to build that kind of a rapport with the community. So, yeah. Sharm, you got anything to add to that? Uh, I mean, it, you know, like you said everything, you know, it's just, it, everything takes time, you know, and, and just to go back to uh, talk about how I met uh, 4,500, you know, it, I didn't, I never seen him. I didn't know what he looked like. But like six months straight, we was just reposting each other on uh, on Instagram. I post something, he'll come post it, and I see him post something, I come post it. Never met him, never had a DM or nothing. And uh, you know, we uh, eventually uh, joined forces. You know what I mean? We're crowded streaming, and you know, I'm a bricklayer too. You know, so so we work back and forth like that. But you know, that same love and. You know, that's what we need more of, you know, we don't need scammers. We need people that's that's actually bringing something to the table and, and willing to sacrifice, willing to to come and put in work and not expect, you know, a million dollars in return. You know what I mean? Look at the greater goal. Uh, we need more people like that. And I think our community will grow if more people had that mindset. You don't have to pay me today. You know, I believe in a movement. You know what I mean? So I'm just here to put the work in. So I appreciate people like uh, 4,500 and, and you, Rocky, and Ru Rob, you know, and, you know, uh, with this uh, Screw Week and, and when you uh, hear about DJ Screw Legacy, I never hear y'all say one thing about a dollar or one thing about, man, we need to make this about our money or nothing like that. That's, that's what builds a community. So, you know, y'all stuck with me, you know, so uh, y'all might as well get used to me. <laughs> that, okay. Sorry, y'all. Dogs barking in the background. Oh, yeah. Life. <laughs> uh, and sun dumping trash. <laughs> like two Trisses. Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> this is hey. my son, Tristan. Yes, he's a grown man. True week. <laughs> week. True week. True week. <laughs> Next generation. Yeah. Um, so in a kind of Sherm, what do you want to do now? Do we do you feel like uh, we should have this conversation or should we play discharge? It's up to you. It's really up to you. I mean, we, we have both on deck. We have a discharge show, uh, you know, but I think we should touch on a little bit before we get to that, a little bit about, you know, helping uh, independent artists. And not Nothing long, like you said, we, we didn't want to have a, uh, a dare show when we watched the, uh, uh, the mm -hmm. show, but, you know, some things we need to talk about, you know, so, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, this panel is to help independent artists, and we talked about health, uh, we talked about legacy and community, and uh, you know, I just wanted to give my two cents on uh, on how artists could secure what they work hard for. You know, DJ Screw and I, and, and rap a lot, and and other people started the independent wave. D Rick. You know, even though he was a record label, he was still independent. You know what I mean? So 
Houston is the independent city. You know, we all want to do things on our own. We don't want New York help. We don't want LA help. You know, we don't want Chicago buttoning our business. Everybody in Houston want to stay independent and support our, uh, ourselves, you know. And um, I just want to let artists know that, uh, uh, make sure that when you create your music, uh, that you do three things. I'm not going to go too far in depth. Uh, if you want to talk about it, you can uh, hit us up in the DM, like I said earlier. But I just want y'all to do uh, three things. When you create a song, I want you to first uh, 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 go and fill out a, uh, an account for BMI or ASCAP. Pick one. You know, that's how you protect your writer's credit. And a lot of people know about BMI or ASCAP. And, but they only know one part of it. That's only half your check. You know, uh, 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 having a, my own streaming company, you know, I just want to let people know that we pay two checks. We pay a check to your distributor or to you directly, and we pay a check to BMI uh, and ASCAP. But if you're only signed up with BMI or ASCAP as a writer, then you're only getting one check. You're supposed to sign up as a writer and a publisher. 50% of that money comes to you as a writer, 50% of that money, 50% uh, of that money comes to you as a publisher. So if you don't sign up as a publisher, then you're, you're leaving 50% of your cash uh, uh, out there on the table and who knows what they're going to do with it. All right. So that's number one. Number two, I want you to uh, copyright your music. When you do create the song or, or whatever it is, it's already copyrighted, but you need to put it on record because you want them to have the authority to be, to be able to take your music down or stop someone from trying to capitalize on your music. So just go to copyright.org, uh, 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 create a profile, pay the fee. I think it's like $35 or something like that. And then upload a copy of your song. Now it's out there, it's on record. So anybody who try to capitalize your song, uh, you know, they, they'll get a, a, not a cease and desist, they'll just stop it, you know? It, we try to upload music with uh, uh, videos with music in the background and they tell us we can't monetize it because it's copyright. Even though the artist gave us permission, you know, they still knock it down. So that's one and two. Uh, uh, and number three, I just want to make sure that you guys uh, uh, pick a good uh, distributor. You know, don't just go to the popular uh, distribution company uh, just because a lot of people go there. Really read the fine print. See how much money they're taking from you and uh, make sure that you get reports every month. I hear stories about people. I don't want to say any names. Uh, of companies, but I hear stories about people saying, yeah, you know, I've been signed to these people for six months or two years. I haven't got a check. I haven't got a receipt. I haven't got stats. I don't know what my streams look like. So make sure you pick a, uh, a good distribution company. So, you know, copyright your music, sign up as a writer and a publisher with BMI or ASCAP and pick the right distributor. And uh, that's 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 the only thing I want to say, you know, to independent authors. Awesome. And Rural, did you? I saw you put something in the chat. Did you want to chime in on your own personal uh, experience in the music industry as well? Peace, peace. Yeah, I'd be happy to. And also, I'm happy to speak on behalf of Music Bizways too. Uh, <laughs> if, I mean, that's another a sponsor. You know, I saw on the email anyway. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, I thank you for those those three key insights, Sherm. I definitely agree um, from a, from all three aspects that those make a critical. I mean, they make that's how you make your money. You know, um, one thing I put in the chat was just like copyright bundles tend to be a, a more affordable route for folks, so you can put up. I think it's eight tracks or eight bodies of work. Um, that can all be copyrighted within that $35 fee. So rather than paying $35 each time, you can have all your stuff together. So my recommendation would be if you have one project, you know, or uh, several records that you've already have in the archives, just go ahead and put them all together and get them gone through that cycle, um, the USPTO, you know, to be able to get your um, stuff uh, complete 
And, you know, maybe just develop that. If I were to give, if it's okay for me to add, just my my uh, personal tips to what Sherm was just saying is, you know, try to create a process for yourself internally before you do everything external. You know, when it comes to copywriting or even, you know, uh, music licensing and, and things like that. I, I can speak from a sync licensing perspective in the television and music industry. A lot of people don't realize that you can make money, you know, by having licensing deals with different um, networks. You know, um, they're often looking for, you know, talent that are set in the, the community or the neighborhood of the the, the play or the, the show um, or the movie. And so um, building rapport with um, music supervisors um, in the film and TV world are really helpful. Um, people who are literally, their job is to curate the list of artists or music that's gonna be throughout. Um, that's just something that came to mind. Um, yeah, and then also protect yourself in your IP. This, just to reiterate that this is just to protect your intellectual property. And as an independent artist, I think that that's our current that's our currency. Until we have all the money in the world or whatever the aspirations are, you know, this the, your IP is your currency. Um, and so make sure that you do the best you can to protect yourself, so you don't have to deal with all of that extra stuff on the back end. Yes, it's like uh, staying strapped in the music industry, the show. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, like I, um, these are all things that as time went on, uh, of course, if you don't do it up front and you wind up hitting the jackpot or having a hit song or something along those lines, then you, uh, okay, that's cool. Uh, then you wind up having to go back and take care of all of this, you know, all of these things. So it's like doing double work, <laughs> unfortunately. So um, yes, for as far as independent music artists are concerned, um, make sure that you educate yourselves. Um, I know that uh, Derek uh, D. Rick Dixon talks a lot about uh, some of the the things that have happened uh, to, you know, he's talked to me personally about this and of course with uh, Music Biz Wiz as well a lot of things have happened in the music industry that have kind of caught him off guard because he didn't know um, how all of these things went. So of course, education is very important. So um, with that said, whew, man, we are only on day three, <laughs> y'all. So uh, of course, before we head out, uh, I want to kind of give you a little bit of a run through of what we have for the rest of the week. Um, when I pull it up on my phone. Yeah, can I bring some up while you look? Yeah, go ahead. And, you know, I definitely want to give a shout out to, you know, Music Biz Wiz and, you know, the information uh, that I shared. It was, it was powered by uh, Music Biz Wiz. And also they have independent artists can lean on Music Biz Wiz for some kind of manual or book, right, that'll walk you step by step, you know, through this process as an independent artist. So, you know, we gave you a few tidbits but you can read it step by step, letter by letter, you know, uh, and, and shout out to Music Biz Wiz for taking the time uh, to think about independent artists and, you know, giving them a, a an instruction manual, basically, you know, so shout out to them for that. Shout out Music Biz Wiz. It's on the way, y'all. It is on the way. So, um, oh, and shout out to Crowded Streamings and... Yeah. 
uh, crowded streaming and official bricklayers. Um, before I give an announcement of you know what we have going forward, Sherm, um, if you could kind of tell a little bit about uh, crowded streaming as a site, as uh, an app, the Purple app, right. uh, and tell everyone how they can get their music on crowded streaming, and then of course forty five hundred. It, once he's finished, if you wouldn't mind uh, telling people, uh, independent music artists, how to get in contact with you um, and your latest and next projects. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the Purple app, like uh, Rocky said, you know, it's an app, you know, I hate to take, uh, you know, somebody else's line, but it's really for us, by us. It's for independent artists, you know, right now, uh, with other streaming platforms, you know, artists are kind of held uh, in the situation. Their money is kind of held hostage. You know, they have a, uh, uh, they give away 70% only to get 30%, you know, and you can look those stats up. We want to be the platform that get, that, that have the artists keep the 70, you know, and we just use the 30 to keep the platform going, you know. So we're definitely here for independent artists. And, uh, you know, it's free to download. It's free to upload music and we pay for streams just like everybody else uh, uh, to sign up. We don't have uh, open sign up right now because we want to have some kind of dialogue with each artist that sign up just to let them know that we're real people. We're really available. You can really call us, you know, any time of the night artists send music at three in the morning and we make sure we get it uploaded. Uh, but just send us a DM uh, to let us know. Uh, we'll, we'll send you the link to let you know uh, how to sign up and how to uh, get your artist profile set up. And on that artist profile, you can see your stats. You can see what cities listen to you. You can see how much money you made. You can see your top songs, top albums. And one thing that we have uh, that no other platform has is you can see exactly who listens to you. You can see the person's username and you can see their email. So we want to uh, encourage artists giving back to their fans. So if you see a person listen to you 10,000 times, send them a t-shirt, send them a, a, a free ticket to one of your shows, send them a hat, you know? So we want to encourage that. So like I said, we're here for independent artists, but we're here for the fans too. So we we'll appreciate y'all support. All right, so I'm gonna pick it back off of uh, Sherm on them. A Crowder streaming, look at here as a DJ and a artist on Crowder streaming. Put your music on Crowder streaming. It is a dope platform. It is easy to use, friendly. I mean, you ain't never did nothing before. It's easy to do. So make sure you sign up for Crowder streaming, aka the Purple Lab. Uh, me, I'm DJ Forty Five Hundred on all platforms: um, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. If you uh, want to work free of charge on me, uh, DM me or King C. Uh, and also, you can get your interview signed up and you can be interviewed in the crowded room sponsored by the Bricklayers and get that put on Grind City TV. Um, uh, well, latest projects that I'm working on right now, I'm actually going to get back in the motion of the virtual uh, Bricklayers mixtape tour. We took a little, little break, but we kind of kicking back in. So this mixtape tour, everything be featured on Crowder Streaming. So I appreciate y'all and y'all know everything pulls slow. And what is y'all's uh, Instagram names too? I'm sorry. Yeah, you can follow me, uh, uh, Admin Sherm and, uh, and uh, uh, at Crowder Streaming. Uh, just follow the platforms. And uh, like I said, with assistance, whatever you need, we'll be here for you. All right, and that uh, Instagram is underscore DJ4500 underscore, and Facebook, it is DJ4500. And of course, uh, you guys heard a little bit from Rue Rob, but his DMs are not open. <laughs> do that now. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> hey, you, see, you know, he didn't dispute it. <laughs> no, yeah, I say that from personal experience. I, I say that from personal experience. I reached out to uh, Rue Rob to tell him that everything was dope. I saw everything, you know, what he's doing. And even then, it took me a while to get in. So, <laughs> no, his DMs are not open. But 
if you want to support what we're doing, um, we are, of course, also Screwed Up HQ, representing the nonprofit, official nonprofit organization of Screwed Up Records and Tapes. So definitely tap in at, at S-C-R-E-W-E-E-K. Yes, I spelled that right. Underscore W-E-E-K. So Screek underscore week. And um, also, um, I just want to add that thank you all for being here. We're all here for the love of Screw. Um, and uh, just one more little itty bitty, titty, tiny weeny little thing. Um, I like hearing different types of slowed and chopped. Now, of course, we don't call it screwed and chopped because only screw can, is it ain't screw, it's screwed and screw it, okay. right? So, but slowed and chopped uh, as a genre itself um, is a very popular uh, genre of music. I listen to a lot of music in that genre and 4,500 is one of the best that I've heard. So. If you skip out on the opportunity to have him slow and chop your stuff for free, why I oughta? But anyway, <laughs> so screw week, y'all, to close this out. Um, so of course, you know, as I said, we had Screw's House, an event at the African American Public Library at the Gregory School. We had the slab parade and community celebration. Why could not? I couldn't remember that word earlier. Celebration is so easy. Anyway, uh, screwed up records and tapes at 3538 West Fuquay Street. If you haven't been and you live in Houston, why? Um, but screwed up records and tapes had a slab parade. Um, and if you're part of our email list, you received a link of uh, the Houston Chronicle who popped out uh, for, you know, to do some interviews and take a look at, you know, everything that we're doing. Uh, on Tuesday, we have Glitter Karaoke, um, which is an event. It's kind of like screw, like trap karaoke with a twist of screw. <laughs> and um, on Wednesday, we actually have two events. We have an event at the Graffiti Park, um, uh, which is a the airing of a, a virtual, a pre-recorded uh, collaboration that Screwed Up Records and Tapes and Screwed Up HQ organized with Classroom Concerts. So really dope. Uh, I'm not even going to give you all the lineup. We're going to let it be a surprise. And... Uh, on that same Wednesday, we have uh, the also the DJ Screw Birthday Tribute at the Savoy. Um, on Thursday, we have uh, an event at the Atomic Bottle. On Friday, we have Bar Rosa. On Saturday, we're at Ebony Saturdays, which is on 11681 Westheimer Boulevard. And to close out Screw Week, or Screw Almost Two Weeks, <laughs> if you're counting the events, uh, on Sunday, July 24th, we have Screw Cella at uh, Lux Tavern. So once again, thank you guys for your continued support of Screwed Up Records and Tapes, Screwed Up HQ, and uh, all of the events that we're building for Screw Week, um, make sure you follow us on Instagram and please make sure that you join our email list so that ongoing you'll be informed of our events. We're, I don't know, we're talking, every time we finish an event, right, Ru Rob, like people are like, no, what, no, we can't wait a whole nother 364 days for this event again. We have to do something in between, but that all comes with support and, you know, demand. <laughs> so 
please support us. And thank you so much for tuning in tonight to our virtual event. Later, screw love.